okay building on our concept in the last video I showed you how you can send a text to your phone from your computer using plain old email it was very simple you just need to know what carrier you need to know the phone number and the carrier of who you're sending to but now let's look at making that a little more useful I gave some examples like my doorbell uh, when it's pressed it just sends an HTTP request to my computer which sends an HTTP request to my server that sends an email as a text to my phone um, let and there's a variety of ways to send emails from your phone or from your server, but this is just basic example here. Once you have a web server or I'm sorry, a mail server hooked up, set up on your server, uh, you can use a basic PHP code. Actually, let me use Vim to go into this. Uh, so this is actually a trim down. My, my actual script is a little bit longer than this. And of course, I'm using HTTPS, so my transmission's encrypted. I use user login, so I have username and password. I also use a security key in my actual script. And then this is the completion of the script here. So I'm leaving out all the security stuff in this example because I don't want you guys to see my security information. But this is the information. Basically what's happening is uh, I can send an HTTP request with a valid uh, security key and password and username. And then I also send a URL in the URL, the user uh, that I want to send to. I get that, I filter that string out. I then get the message and filter it. That's going to uh, filter it. It's going to sanitize it. And um, I believe that also, uh, I think that part, it comes through if there's special characters, it converts it to you know HTML uh, encoding. Um, I think that's what's doing that. I know that comes through like that. Anyway, so I get the user and I get the message. And that's not the security user. That's actually the user that's used later on in the script right here with user this and user that. My script has two users in it. So even if I have the right um, security key, username, and password, if I don't pass it to prop one of these two users, the script's just going to exit. But what this is doing, because me and my wife both use this script to send things from our computer. This is running on my web server. Uh, and basically it's saying if it's Jen we're gonna to send to this phone number that way I'm not sending my phone number every time I do one of these requests it's stored in the file here and uh, if it's if the user is Chris it's now gonna send it and we use Google Fi so I think the last video I said it's fi.google.com it's actually msg.fi.google.com and if it's near those users it just says user error and exits but if it is one of these two users and everything else checks out well now I'm going to send a mail send mail to that phone number with the title or the subject line of desktop and then inside the message it's going to have our message and also echoes out message and that's just for um, checking uh, uh, what you call it bug checking and actually my next script that I'll show you uh, actually utilizes that so or I think it utilizes that I have, I have to look at the script so again this is the basic of checking the, the username so I know what phone number to send to and the message is being sent. This doesn't have any of the security features in it. Again, I'm not a security expert. I hate talking uh, about security in my videos because I would sound, people, people will always argue, no matter how much you know about security, someone always is going to tell you you're wrong. Anyway, that script or something similar to that is on my Films by Chris server um, and again, protected. Now, on my desktop computer, I have this script, or at least a similar version of it, that's going to set a URL of where that script we just looked at is on my web server. Next, it's going to use XClip to see what I have, last thing I highlighted, last thing I selected. My computer is set to user Chris. My wife's computer is set to user Jen. Then we do a very basic yeah, URL uh, wget. Then, uh, yeah, it's not checking the output from the server. Then I send a notification to my desktop with a phone icon that displays there for five seconds that says sent to phone and then it will tell me what message was sent to phone. Now, with my desktop interface and pretty much every desktop interface on Linux will allow you to create shortcut keys for scripts. Now that I have that script saved and I have it saved in my user local bin folder so that path is in my path directory so I can run that command from anywhere on my computer so if I was to highlight this and I type in to phone I hit enter and it told me that text was sent to my phone five seconds later that message will go away that means I know it went my phone is on silent but I'll check right now yes I did receive that notification again it usually takes five to ten seconds for 
for to get to the phone. I've never had it take more than 10 seconds. But I have set that to a shortcut key. Uh, my modifier key, which is, on my case, my Windows key, the key with the little Windows logo on it, unfortunately, and the, the letter S. So I can highlight a bunch of text. I can highlight a URL or a bunch of text, and I can then just hit Windows key S, and now all that text was just sent to my phone, and let me check my phone. Oh, you know, I had my phone silent, and that silent actually just ran out just as I said that, but you heard that go through. Let me silence it again so that I uh, don't get any other messages while I'm recording here that will interrupt. And uh, now, actually, I'm going to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to turn it back on. That way you can see how long it takes for the message to get there. You should be able to hear it come through to my phone. Mark that one as red. <laughs> I accidentally clicked pause on my recording. Okay, uh, actually what I want to do now, I'm actually going to turn notifications back on. That way you guys can hear how long until uh, the message gets there. So I'm just going to highlight some text. I'll highlight this here. And I'll hit Windows S on my machine. It says it's sent. Let's wait for it. There you go. What was that? Five seconds? And that's that's probably about average. And again, at most ten seconds for it to get there. Um, this is also very useful if you want to send URLs. So, for example, if I go to filmsidechris.com, I can highlight again. If you click in the text box here in, in the address bar, it looks like it's highlighted. It actually hasn't been selected yet. You have to select it. You can double click it or highlight it. Once I've done that, I hit Windows S and I just sent myself that URL. Now. There you go. And uh, again, if you watch my previous video, I have another shortcut key for 10 euros. So let's say this URL was really, really long. All I have to do is hit Windows T, wait for that box to come up, Windows S, and I just sent the tiny URL to my phone. There we go. Uh, so as you can see, creating shortcut keys and being able to grab stuff from the clipboard makes things so easy because as soon as something's highlighted, I can just send it to my phone. And it's just, this could be a, a whole bunch of text. I don't know what the, uh, the limit. It probably would break it up into multiple texts, but uh, I can highlight multiple page, uh, multiple things. So if I um, cat out uh, this little script here, I can highlight all this. And when I Windows S, it's gonna send all that text to my phone. Uh, and it just makes things super simple. And again, if I was to go to linux.com, I can Take that, and again, let's say that was a long URL. Actually, let's let's try something. Let's go uh, Linux Journal. I'm just looking for something with a longer URL. I want to go to their like forum or something. Topics, mobile. Let's go here. Okay, so it's not a very long URL, but let's say I want this. I just do that. I go Windows T, Windows S, and I just sent myself a tiny URL. Uh, so again, watch my previous video for my script on tiny URL uh, code and that uh, grabs from your clipboard and gets you a tiny URL. Um, super duper simple, super, super, use, super duper useful. Um, and again, I have my own web server set. You can actually create scripts that will log into your Gmail and other e uh, email accounts and send it. So if you don't have a web server, there are ways to do that. I'm not going to go into the detail of the server side of things, but uh, it's very simple to use wget to do an HT, uh, HTML request that, and your server can send out email. And again, the send, the notify send, again, I always say that backwards, notify send makes it very easy because if you're not running the shell, then uh, I don't, you don't know if the script ran or not if you don't have any output. So I get that dialog box and if the dialog box comes back blank or it doesn't come up at all, I know that something went wrong and I can, I can troubleshoot from there. But uh, that's it. Again, visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. You can search through all my videos there. And you can also go to the support section. And there you can support me, support me through PayPal or Patreon. I really do appreciate the support. The more support I get, the more videos I get. I'm trying to knock out a lot of videos uh, right now uh, while I'm home injured um, so that I can post a lot of them in November, December, which is probably when you're watching this. If you're a Patreon viewer, you're watching it before everybody else. Keep that in mind. Thank you for watching. As always, I hope that you have a great day.